Hey folks, Adam Brian Dada with the Lower Reward video series. Just leaving the pool area on a very empty beach. There's a couple of people up there, a couple of people down here. It's beautiful out, but as usual, society is afraid of doing something like this. So it's me and a couple others. I left up there because they're pounding the music. It's not me, it's not the resort. It is a couple of people with their Bluetooth boomboxes. And some of you who have followed me a while know that I'm very much against pre-recorded music, uh, such as MP3s or uh, records even. And I wanna talk a little bit, have a two week self-study introduction about the reward elements of music in general. Uh, this is a angel side release introduction. There's definitely going to be some devil sides for you Patreon supporters or as I reach enough YouTube followers. If you are new to my series, please stop this video and go to my intro videos which are not binge worthy. I'd like you to watch one video a day or every other day, ponder it, and then start on a two week self-study intro that sounds interesting to you. I use a lot of terminology that is confusing and a lot of people don't understand it. So I'd like you to use the intro series to kind of get an explanation of what I'm about. Music seems to be extremely elemental, foundational to human tribalism. Music has separated societies for all of human existence. There's evidence that we played music using instruments cut from animal bones or animal hide or animal guts going back forever and ever. So I'm not against music. I'm against music as a higher reward substitute for life, for living. When I discuss the reward elements of music, when I talk to people about their virtual addiction to music, it involves so many pieces of my lower reward cookbook. For example, humans can't multitask. And a lot of people say I can't work without music in the background. I've heard that all my life. I'm not one of them, not anymore. Some people don't realize that music in a retail store is targeted at that retail store's market. So the age of that music, the, the uh, type of music it is, is suited for their most likely shoppers because you will shop longer in a store that plays the songs you love. I've owned bars and nightclubs and of course music is a big part of that because it keeps you around. It boosts your dopamine so that way you will feel happy for a moment and then when the song you love is over you can't really play it again always and maybe you hate the next one so now you got to buy something to make your brain feel that dopamine again. So you buy some booze or some shots or some nachos, whatever it is. Pre-recorded music. When I was young, I loved it because it put me back at that place in that concert venue with the cute girls that I would, you know, later go out and date or hook up with. It reminded me of fun times with my friends in the car when we were teenagers, jamming the music as loud as possible. It connected me to my old self. And I'm no longer a fan of recollection. Memories are great and all, but they're the past. I don't need to feel contented and comforted because of my past, distant past. It's nice, but I'm not friends with those friends anymore. I have nothing in common with them other than good memories from ages past and I want to be contented going forward. I don't want to cling to the past, the what was. I like what might be. Music, pre-recorded or any kind, 
involves that boredom triangle that I've spoken about before. When we're motivated to succeed at something, instead of going out and doing something towards success, maybe we turn on music and that dopamine in the brain makes us no longer motivated. And I see a lot of people, a lot of creative people who absolutely destroy their futures because instead of succeeding at reaching the next milestone toward their dream, their realistic dream, they turn to the daydream of music. I've interviewed hundreds, potentially thousands of you on what music makes you daydream about. Does it make you daydream that you're going to be the anthem singer in front of the crowd? Even though you're a terrible singer, I'm a terrible singer. I don't have the face for being in a band either, even though I've been in a band. Does it make you dream of community? Having something that you belong to and you feel like you belong to? So we've got music with the rhythm, rhythms that are suited to the culture, the consumer culture of what they're marketed to. Music used to indoctrinate religion, true in almost every religion. I actually think, I believe, every religion has a form of music to indoctrinate, to repeatedly remind in the verses and chorus what a person should believe, what a person should trust. Music pre-recorded gives us that good feeling that we know where the fourth beat is going to fall, which gives our brain an actual hormonal responsive success. So when you're listening to music and you know when that downbeat is going to come, when you're tapping your foot decently enough to the rhythm, it's a sense of success. The brain's motivation is cut, cut off because you've succeeded in understanding what that music is going to head to. Or when the verse comes and then the chorus comes and you've already heard the chorus once and your brain knows what the next lyrics are going to be, it creates a sense of success. When I go shopping, on the rare occasions that I go shopping, if they're playing music I like, out the door. Out the door, turn it around and out the door. And I've had store managers come and say, hey, why are you leaving so quick? And I said, I don't like that you're playing music. And they said, well, it makes our customers comfortable. Well, of course, you're in business to make your customers comfortable. But that's not true. You're not making them comfortable. You're activating the addiction, the consumption addiction. And the consumption addiction of music will drive them to consume other addictive elements, such as at the grocery store, rather than going to buy buying the organic kale, you go out and you buy the potato chips or the beer because you've been switched in your mind from the healthy lower reward drive that you had coming to the grocery store to, oh my God, I love this song. It reminds me of being a teenager. Let's go buy beer. And the trilogy of pre-recorded music in the bar is always music, beer, and something. Music, beer, chicks. Music, beer, chips. Music, beer, drugs. Always that trilogy. You ever go to a bar with no music? It doesn't work so well. It's always the music. It's always the music, not the booze. And we don't even think about it as consumers, but producers sure do. The producer that owns that nightclub or that bar sure knows it. You sure aren't gonna go to a biker bar and start playing just rap music or Beethoven. Try that on for a change. See if you can do that at one of those jukeboxes that let you pick any song in all of the universe and put some Beethoven on. And see how fast the crowd gets angry. It's awesome, actually. And yet, I don't even like Beethoven. Because Beethoven was created to appease the kings, but he was granted to the poor people so that they could become harmonious in their thanks for the king giving them a boon or a blessing. Again, it was nonsense back then and it's nonsense today. Now. I like producing music because I like profit and I like controlling the masses without them knowing. But the goal of the Lower Reward Lifestyle video series here is not for me to control you. That's not my goal. I don't want to control you. I'm here because I want to develop more friends who can come to me to this completely empty, beautiful beach. I mean, the water's warm, the sand is huge 
and I have two friends who are with me today, I'd like to have six more. But I don't want mindless consumers. I don't want to bring guys here who are just going to get drunk. It's unlimited alcohol, and I haven't had a drink this trip. Neither, I don't think either of my friends who came recently to visit have had a drink either. So I don't want that. I want someone who can come here and plot with me. Let's look at the other consumers at this hotel together and figure out how can we profit from them. They look disgusting. There's nothing healthy about most of them. How can we profit from them? That's why I'm here, is to have moments of comfort, moments of contentment, true relaxation where I'm not actually doing anything important. And then I'm here to plot with my associates, my friends. I really love the idea. And music is absolutely one of the plot elements of producerism. A lot of times movies that have really bad, that have really bad plot points will kind of cover them up with music. Action scenes that don't hold together so well need music. Horror scenes that don't have enough cinematic graphic fear add music. Try watching a movie with the sound off and try watching a movie with the sound on and the video off. The music tends to be a huge spine for the plot point, huge. And if you don't have great music in your, in your indie movie, that's the reason the audience loses interest. I've seen it all my life that I started this lower reward path Nobody defends any addiction, any consumer bad habit more than music. Nothing. Not professional sports, not drugs or booze, not porn, not mindless Netflix entertainment. The thing that people defend the most is their love of music. And yet, without actually looking daily and seeing what your music consumption level is like, how much of it exists, it's very hard to actually prove to people that there's a problem. So this two-week self-study, which this is an introduction of, will go to show you where music comes in, where it actually makes you more of a consumer, puts you in that readiness state, and it's gonna talk to you about the conversations you can have, but how you can harvest that to know what you should be doing and not doing. It helps you focus on what your goals are every day by avoiding it. It helps even allow you to maybe consume music as a celebration or to use it possibly to halt some of the things you were doing where you want to kind of move your brain to a lower reward medium. So knowing about pre-recorded music takes about two weeks, but part of that is also going to be how you can use music in your own life. Not pre-recorded music though, how you can use your own music, your own rhythms, your own melodies, your own even lyrics to move yourself forward. This is always going to be a topic that people skip on. I've seen it on Reddit, I've seen it on Facebook. A lot of people disagree with me. A lot of people I respect are gonna be consumer addicts for the rest of their lives and I still will respect them. But I will like to warn everybody, going through the two week self-study, will show you during your future when music might be too much for you, when you might wanna walk away, when you might wanna make a decision and say, you know what, now I understand. Now I understand why this pre-recorded music is unhealthy for me, and I'm gonna make the decision to not consume it, just today. You don't have to turn it off forever. You don't have to tear the stereo out of your car or get rid of your fancy headphones. You don't have to stop going to the bar and you know consuming the jukebox. You don't have to do that stuff. But becoming aware of these reward elements is really the goal of this two-week self-study. And for those of you who want to learn to use music to manipulate others, like I have all my life, there will be the Devil Side series, which again are available, will be available to Patreons or be available to everyone when I reach a certain amount of followers. Thanks for listening. 
I'm Adam Brian Dada, and this is the Lower Reward video series.